You asked for it, so here it is. The best mod to try out in Dagger 4 Unity. To preface this video, the modding scene for Dagger 4 Unity is in its infancy, and there are still hundreds if not thousands of possibilities yet to be made, with some really exciting projects currently in the works. The majority of up and coming mods can be found on the Daggerfall Workshop forums, with most of the popular complete ones being available on the more familiar Nexus. To make your life easier, I have compiled the best mods into the Google spreadsheet linked in the description and the pinned comment below. I have grouped every mod into an overarching category for those who want to make their own mod lists. But if you want an easier option, I have created 5 simple-ish to install builds that you can follow, and that is what I will be showcasing in this video. Navigating the spreadsheet is easy enough, use the tabs at the bottom to choose your desired build, read what each mod does, follow the links and then download them from there. So without further ado, let's go through each build, starting with the simplest one, the bug fixes only option. As the name implies, this build focuses on patching the various bugs that can be found within Daggerfall Unity. If you need help downloading and installing the Unity version of Daggerfall, all the links you will need can be found in the Start Here tab to the far left of the spreadsheet. These mods, when combined, essentially work as a kind of unofficial patch. And while not every bug has been fixed, some of the more egregious ones, such as dungeon exteriors not matching their description, have been no longer will a mighty castle be shown as nothing more than a mound of dirt in the ground. This is the build ideal for those who want to play the vanilla Daggerfall Unity experience with just a little less jank than before. Every build from this one forward will also include these fixes as there is no reason to leave them out from the more complex offerings. For our second build, we have the Restored Content. This brings back the majority of the cut content that was teased or promised by Bethesda in the slew of demos and marketing material that preceded the game's release. Essentially, this brings back some of the missing features that I pointed out in my analysis, including underwater sprites and enemies riding on horseback out in the wilderness. The famous faces of the Iliac Bay in particular restores a lot of the faces that were present in the files of the original game, but simply never linked to any of the nobles they were meant to. This now gives you at least some reason to visit the kings and queens of the lesser kingdoms, if albeit it is a minor reason. As with a lot of these mods, this one is still receiving new updates and just recently, as in literally the day I am writing this script, the mod author Cliffworms has added a lot of new visual features to this, giving these once boring capital cities a little more flair to rival the grand castles of Daggerfall or Wayrest. This build is ideal for those who want to embark on a near vanilla experience, but with a little more changes than what the simple bug fixes offer. Vanilla Plus now we're getting to a true mod list. This offers enhancements to most systems within the game, from graphics to gameplay, while retaining some of that classic vanilla feel. Veterans to the game won't feel like the game has been changed beyond recognition, but will notice a few nice additions that go a decent way into making the game feel more modern, immersive and a little more forgiving in areas due to the quality of life mods. This build is highly recommended for a second playthrough or for newbies who aren't purists and are willing to start with a slightly altered but further in-depth experience. Graphical highlights include Enhanced Sky. This removes the classic 2D sky sprites of the original with a far more attractive and much less motion sickness inducing 3D affair. Combined with Distant Terrain and the vanilla Enhanced mod and the exterior world of Daggerfall has never looked so beautiful while remaining true to its 90s styling. Transparent windows allow the player to observe the living towns from the comfort of a store or their own homes, while real grass gives the ground beneath your feet a little more life. With the user interface, Loot Menu brings DFU into the 21st century, with a Fallout 4 style menu allowing you to access loot without navigating the clunky menus of old, and World Tooltips helps to make navigating Daggerfall a little more friendly to new players. The gameplay has been altered with a slew of mods that aim to enhance and modernise the game to the standards of the later titles in the series. Introducing a rudimentary companion system with mercenaries, adding the repair tools you may be familiar with from Morrowind, implemented magic of regeneration, and even harvestable crops, whose contents you can use in alchemy. Quality of life improvements include better default classes, allowing the player to not just be forced into making their own class if they want to have a fighting chance. 
Even minor changes such as a rest warning if you are ill or poisoned go a long way in helping Daggerfall to be at least a little bit more accessible. Quests have been greatly expanded. While I mentioned that they weren't as bad as some thought in my analysis, they still weren't great. Well, with the slew of quest packs that have been installed here, not only is the variety off the charts, but the quests are now way more dynamic and interesting. With the help of the Actions Framework Master Mod, questmakers can inject many storylines and related questlines into their mods, offering hundreds of new adventures for you to set off on. Finally, we have the Immersion Mods. These are some of the highlights for me especially, starting with the World of Daggerfall. This is an ever-changing and growing mod that is currently in beta, but fully downloadable at the moment. It aims to add over 200 types of discoverable locations throughout the Iliac Bay, from Adric Shrines to towering lighthouses and realistic ports. Large rocks help to give mountainous regions the scale they deserve, and faraway torchlights will lure you to go explore. This is what Daggerfall needs. It gives a reason to not just fast travel everywhere, but to instead spend a few minutes discovering what may be out there in the distance. As I'm typing this script, large strides have been made to make the rocks even more immersive and add even more locations. This is a must-have mod and one to keep your eyes on for sure. Additional immersive mods include basic roads, which connects each hamlet, town and city together with wide cobbled streets or lesser trodden dirt tracks. Taverns Redone makes those small cold inns into invitingly warm surroundings to drink the night away on your travels. Wilderness NPCs add enemy encounters outside of cities, and Power Struggles utilises the otherwise useless information that the game keeps track of, from wars, alliances, famines, plagues and even witch hunts. This info wasn't used until now, where you can stumble into a full-blown battle or come across a slaughter. With this build, travelling around Daggerfall has never been so engrossing. If you use DFU's built-in graphic options, you can even make the game look like it did in 1996. Combine this luck with all those mods and it's fun to imagine what people would have thought if this had existed back then. It would have blown some minds for sure. It's worth mentioning that a lot of these mods are fully customizable to your liking too, allowing you to make some of them as crazy or as subtle as you would like. If you would like to watch a longer showcase of the Vanilla Plus build, there is a live commentary playthrough video linked at the top right of the video now and in the description below. The Graphical Overhaul This build takes a different approach, instead leaving all gameplay as it is in the default Unity version and changing only the graphics. This is an alternative for those who want the vanilla experience gameplay-wise, but can't quite bring themselves to play with the retro graphics. The main attraction here is the huge Dream Project. Standing for Daggerfall Remaster Enchanted Art Mod, this is the ultimate graphical overhaul mod. It removes all of the retro elements from Daggerfall's graphics. Whether this is better or not is up to the user. I will say that it personally helped me to acclimatise to the game when I first started playing it, although I do now prefer the retro look. Hence why part one of my analysis was using this mod. Dream covers 100% of the game assets including sound, music, cinematics and all graphics found in game. It goes beyond the restoration and additionally fixes the old quirks and bugs, as well as increasing the variety and fidelity everywhere possible. Even the UI and map are entirely updated with a crisp yet mostly faithful replacement. Combined with hand-painted model replacements, which offers more lore-friendly options for most textures, and you have a beautiful game that really doesn't look that old especially when you utilise the improved interior lighting mod to create some beautifully lit buildings, and realistic reflections that make windows, tiles and even damp cave walls shine delightfully, which isn't a word I thought I would ever use to describe a dungeon. There are also some optional choices here too. They are mainly optional as they arguably conflict with that flat 2D style of Daggerfall which remains even with Dream installed, what with the hundreds of Paper Mario style NPCs roaming around the place. These mods include 3D animals, which replaces all wildlife with a polygonal equivalent. While these are nice enough, they can't help but feel bolted on when everywhere else you look are 2D sprites. To help remedy this, there is a 3D enemy mod, which uses stock Unity store assets to replace a few enemies in the game. As you can imagine, these vary from decent enough to not so good, and of course, not every enemy type has been updated yet. 
then we have nudity mods because no Elder Scrolls is complete without horny gamers. At least it makes sense with Daggerfall, the game came packaged with nudity so this is really only enhancing it. Which brings us to the ultimate Daggerfall Unity mod build. Graphics, gameplay, immersion, quests, UI, everything that could be changed, enhanced and improved has been. No stone has been unturned with nearly 100 mods included in this build. The game will be enhanced or changed beyond recognition in places, which means, and I cannot stress this enough, that this is only recommended for a second playthrough. It is not for newbies. That's because it is far more in depth and difficult than the base game, requiring a decent level of knowledge on how the game works fundamentally. The main points I really wanted to hit with this overhaul were enhanced role playing and more engrossing moment to moment gameplay. A key element to achieving this is the Roleplay and Realism mod pack. This is your one stop shop for immersive RPG elements, with a range of modular improvements that help the game's realism. Climates and Calories does exactly what it says on the tin, introducing hunger and thirst mechanics alongside the need to maintain your character's warmth, or lack of it, in the game's various environments. You will have to ensure you stay warm in the chilly underground dungeons by wearing long clothes and a thick cloak, or you may have to strip down to barely anything in the sweltering hot deserts of Hammerfell. If you've ever used Skyrim's Frostfall mod, then you already know what to expect. Meritama's mostly magic mod goes a long way in making a magic build not just far more fun than it was before, but actually one of the best builds you can make, introducing tons of new spells as well as roleplayer mechanics tied to them. There are a few other changes added that I personally don't like or that they may conflict with other mods in this list, so I choose to switch them off. Another great reason for why this easy to use built in mod manager is an awesome feature of Dagger for Unity. Warm Ashes makes the exteriors of dungeons a true experience. You know how in Oblivion or Skyrim where you will stumble across a few enemies outside a cave or a ruined castle? Well this does exactly that, but turned up to 11 in some instances. You may come across a few bandits or just some ghastly wildlife that must be dealt with before entering the dungeon, but at other times, you may find yourself locked in a large scale siege facing off against a score of opponents. This mod when combined with the ones from the vanilla plus build I showcased earlier, which are all included in this build of course, goes a long way in giving you a reason to explore the Iliac Bay, add an adventure, stories and action where there was previously nothing. Travel options is the game changer here. We all know that Daggerfall was built with fast travel in mind. But when you include all of these wilderness enhancement mods, like World of Daggerfall, it can feel like a shame to skip over so many of them in a loading screen. Well, with this beauty, you no longer have to. Combining perfectly with the Basic Roads mod, travel options allows you to fast travel in real time, giving you the option to stop and explore at will. Random encounters are even built in, with enemy ambushes and more to be discovered as you embark on your journeys around the nations of the bay. While these may be the standout ones for me, there are loads of other large game changing mods included like the Penwick Papers which introduces new systems such as herbalism, trapping, new magic spells and non-magic spells and a non-magical form of recall for those character sheets lacking in the magic department. Or there's Skullduggery, a thief overhaul that rebalances and improves the mechanics of the thief skills, bringing them closer to how they behave in the later titles, and also adding new thief based items for sale at the thieves guild. There is even a mod that allows you to name your horse, and for it to exist as a physical being in the world that can be mounted, dismounted and lost if you're unlucky enough to forget where you left him in a huge city. When it comes to UI, the gameplay was taken into consideration, especially with this hotkey mod. While it may not fit too well thematically, instead making the game look closer to an MMO than to an Elder Scrolls, the advantages it offers, especially for magic based characters, is undeniable. No longer will you have to open your spellbook every time you wish to cast something, instead it is right there at the click of a button. There is even a weirdly immersive minimap mod. It may seem basic at first, but not only is it fully customizable in game, but it even ties into how the game is being played, with a chance of it getting damaged and in need of repair after a dangerous fight. It can even get dirty in the rain. There are so many more to cover that this video would simply go on forever. I hope this has shown you just how exciting the Dagger for Unity mod scene is though. 
Go check out the spreadsheet to read up on every mod included in this Goliath overhaul. Also remember that with all these mods, it's important to read their pages carefully while installing so you know exactly what they are adding, otherwise you may miss some of the cool little things that they change. As with the Vanilla Plus overhaul, you can watch a longer live commentary showcase of this build linked at the top right of this video now and in the description below. The complete overhaul retro edition is essentially a compromise made for me personally, but it's only fair I offer it to everyone. It offers every single gameplay enhancement from the main build, but replaces the graphic changes with the ones seen with the Vanilla Plus build. For me, there's something to be said for keeping the game's authenticity when it comes to aesthetics. It's for that same reason I prefer to keep Morrowind's textures in their vanilla state, or like to play Oblivion in all its bloomy glory. While the high-res graphics mods served their purpose for others, and did help me to acclimatise the Daggerfall at first, as it is now, I adore Daggerfall's original pixelated style, and so for me, this is the ultimate mod build. I love that retro feel combined with the modern enhancements that make the game far broader and more in depth than it ever was before. If you are worried that this may all be a bit too difficult to install, have no fear. DFU was made with mods in mind, and installing mods for the most part is painless and easy. You will have to pay attention to your load order in places however. I have included the load order I used for each build during my testing at the bottom of the spreadsheet on each build's page. If you are interested in modern Dagger for Unity yourself, well, good news. There is an abundance of text out there to help you get started and inspire you. The Daggerfall Workshop has all the information you need regarding a variety of DF mods, and for those who want to alter the wilderness of Daggerfall, the team who are working on The World of Daggerfall have also begun making a construction set for the game too, and have been generous enough to have created a simple to follow text based tutorial on how to get started. So for the creative among you, I will put links to the relevant DF Workshop and GitHub pages below. That covers everything I set out to do with Daggerfall really. I have analysed the entire game and have created what is currently the most extensive mod builds for the game, well that I know of at least. While I will never abandon this game, I am excited to move on and cover more titles by Bethesda and beyond. I am currently in the process of creating a Discord server, so keep an eye out for the release of that in the future. Thank you to everyone for the amazing response to the Daggerfall retrospective. I cannot express my gratitude enough. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.